My name is Liron Stoller. I manage the technology team in Cadence Verification IP Group. Over the years, we have developed over 100 different VIP models for very different protocols like AXI, USB, PCI Express, Ethernet, DisplayPort, DDR4, and many more. One of our main challenges was to provide all the verification functionality that our user need for, in a useful and consistent way for all these different models. So let's take a quick look at the functionality that, our, that the VAP user need from the VAP uh, model. So he needs the VAP to be able to emulate a device activity. In this example, uh, uh, the verification engineers try to verify a master DOT, and he needs the VAP to emulate the slave activity. Uh, he needs the VAP to be able to monitor his his, the device under test and make sure that it behaves according to the protocol. He needs a coverage model, an API, full set of checkers, uh, user hooks for scoreboarding and other activities, clear messages, and much more than that. So we basically had two options for uh, uh, our architecture. One, is the, one approach is the, the one that I like to call the all-in-one approach. In this, in this approach, you basically have all the functionality in a single agent, including the emulating the slave and monitoring the master and the coverage and checkers and everything. The other approach is the modular approach, where the verification engineer basically instantiates an active slave that takes care of the um, um, slave emulation, but in addition, it inst he instantiates a passive master and connects it exactly like his master duty. So we basically separate the functionality of the device emulation and the DUT monitoring. So why is it so important to separate these two agents? First, they have different configuration. Um, yeah, this one is master, the other one is slave, but they could also be uh, implementing different protocol version. This could be PCI Express Gen 3, this could be PCI Express Gen 2. They could have different capabilities. Actually, the difference in configuration is even deeper than that. The configuration of the active slave is flexible in the sense that you may want to verify your master DUT with different slave configurations. The passive configuration, on the other hand, is very strict. It has to match the exact configuration of the master DUT to monitor it properly. Another difference between these two entities is the internal state machine implementation. The active slave implementation of the state machine is straightforward, just implementing the state machine according to the protocol specification, and the state machine can behave independently. The passive agent state machine, on the other hand, cannot just uh, uh, change according to the protocol specification because it also needs to follow the master DUT state machine. Another reason for the separation is that it creates a more modular uh, uh, verification environment. So, for instance, if you move from block-level block verification to system-level verification, all you need to do here is just to remove the active slave and put instead of it the your RTL or design. Uh, the passive uh, master in this case stays exactly the same. It doesn't change in the, when you move from block to system. If you try to do the same thing here in this approach, you may have uh, uh, the, the implementation of the uh, monitoring functionality and the uh, um, device emulation functionality may uh, mixed up, and, and when you change it from active to passive, you may, may get different, uh, pass different monitor behavior when you uh, move from block to system. The challenge is even bigger if you work on, pro if you have protocol that uh, uh, involve multiple masters communicating to different, mas different number of slaves. Like AHB, for instance. So if you try to verify this system, this protocol, with, in this approach, you will have one very big complex agent, and you, it will be very hard to debug your, your simulation using this agent. If you use the modular approach, you basically break the complex problem to a smaller problems by instantiating VAP instance, VAP agent for each port, these were only some of the reasons for choosing the modular approach. For more information, visit our website. Thank you for watching this video, and see you next time.